Want to speak real Filipino from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at filipinopod101.com. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys, welcome to Filipino Toppers with me, Ice, and today's topic is 10 hardest words to pronounce. Okay, so just try and say these words, and I'm sure like your Filipino friends will be very impressed. Try practicing these words so you can pronounce it properly. Baba Baba, going down. This first one is actually a sentence and it's just made of one syllable which is ba. So it goes baba baba, it means going down. Baba means down and baba ba means going down. And 
the ba at the end is like our question marking particle. So ba 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 ba. If you are going down and someone asks this to you, then you just reply with o oh, o oh, meaning yes or or ba ba ba. So ba 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 ba. It's like the longest conversation in Filipino using one syllable. Bulaklak, flower. Okay, next is bulaklak, meaning flower. For example, mabango ang bulaklak. The flower smells good. Dumadagundong, rumbling. Dumadagundong, meaning rumbling. Doesn't it sound like it's a rumbling noise? Like, dumadagundong. It's like all the bass in that word. For example, dumadagundong na ang bagyo sa labas. The storm is already rumbling outside. Dumadagundong. 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 Di ka pani paniwala. Unbelievable. Next is, di ka pani paniwala. Meaning, unbelievable. For example, di ka pani paniwala ang sinapit ng pamilya niya. The plight of his family is unbelievable. Kagilagilalas. Astounding. Next is, kagilagilalas. Which means, astounding. Hindi na ako nakakakita ng kagilagilalas na pangyayari. I no longer see any astounding events. Kinakailangan. Important. Next one is, kinakailangan. Meaning, important. Kinakailangan laging maging tapat sa trabaho. We must always be honest at work. Kumukuti-kutitap. Twinkling. Next one is, kumukuti-kutitap. Meaning, twinkling. So I guess the hard part of this is like the vowels because like it's mostly U but there's like I and A uh, somewhere. Kumu kuti kuti tap. I guess the only way to pronounce this is to remember all the syllables. Kumu kuti kuti tap. Twinkling. Ang between ay kumu kuti kuti tap. The star is twinkling. How would you even sing like twinkle twinkle little star? Kumu kuti kuti tap. Kumu kuti kuti tap. Try to say it very fast, like kumukoti ko tita, kumukoti ko tita, kumukoti ko tita. <laughs> mamasa masa, moist. The next is mamasa masa, meaning moist. You have to be careful of the accents here because masa means moist, but there's another word spelled the same called masa, which means the masses. So masa and masa. So just be careful to say it as masa. Mamasa, masa. For example, mamasa, masa pa ang damo. The grass is still moist. Misterioso. Mysterious. Next one is misterioso, meaning mysterious. I don't know, it sounds like it's easy enough to pronounce, like just mis- mysterious becomes misterios with an O at the end. Like Spanish people can do it. Misterioso. For example, Siya ay isang misteryosong babae, meaning, she is a mysterious woman. Patalastas, commercial. Next one is patalastas, meaning commercial. This one, I actually had a problem saying this when I was a kid. And I just, yeah, I just remember it being very hard for me, but yeah, now it's fine. For example, laging maraming patalastas ang laban ni Manny Pacquiao. Mani Pacquiao's fights always have a lot of commercials. Cause yeah, those things like involve a lot of money. So they need a lot of commercials. Okay, and that's it for today. That was 10 hardest words to pronounce. Which do you think is the hardest one to pronounce for you? Like, just comment down below. Do you have any word that you think is hard for me to pronounce? And I will accept your challenge. <laughs> Or like, if you could think of any word that is hard to pronounce in Filipino, put it in the comment below. Maybe I'll try to say it for you in the next lessons. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, press the thumbs up. And subscribe to our channel. And if you want to learn more Filipino, check out our site, filipinopod101.com. See you again next time. Thank you, salamat, and paalam.
Want to speak real Filipino from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at filipinopod101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Erica and welcome to Filipino Top Words. Our lesson for today is the 10 questions you should know in Filipino. So let's begin. Anong pangalan mo? What's your name? The first question that you should know is Anong pangalan mo? In English, what's your name? So, how do you answer this question? For instance, my name is Erica. So, in Filipino, I would say Ako si Erica or I'm Erica. This is a very useful uh, question when you want to get to know other people. So, you better remember this. Anong pangalan mo? In English, what's your name? Kamusta? How are you? The next question that you should know is Kamusta? Or in English, how are you? How do you respond to this question? You say, Mabuti naman. Ikaw? Or, I'm good. You? So, this is also again another very common question that you can ask your friends just because you're friends. So, you have to know how they are. Parang lagi na lang sarcastic Actually, the longer version is Kamusta ka? But no one really says that now. So, you can just simply say, Kamusta? Yeah, or even shorter, you can just say, Musta. So, it's very nice actually to say this to people, especially if you haven't seen them for a long time. Taga saan ka? Where are you from? So, the next question that you should know is, Taga saan ka? Or in English, where are you from? So, how do you answer this question? If you are, say, from Manila, then you reply, Taga Maynila ako. Or, I'm from Manila. So, say you are from, from Lisbon, <laughs> then you'd say, Taga Lisbon ako. Or, I'm from Lisbon. So, this is also a very uh, important question to know, especially if you're just meeting someone for the first time. So, I don't know, just people are very interested in where you go home. <laughs> or where, you, where you're from, not really where you go home. Kailan ang iyong kaarawan? When is your birthday? Kailan ang iyong kaarawan? In English, when is your birthday? So if you want to really uh, respond to this question in fluent Filipino, then you would say, Sa ikadalawamputlima ng Disyembre ang aking kaarawan. Or in English, this translates to my birthday is on December 25th. If it's December 25th, then obviously your birthday is on Christmas. But if say, say August 9th, then you would say, in Filipino, ikasham ng Agosto. But no one really says that, so you just say August 9. Just say August 9. Ang kaarawan ko ay sa August 9. Or my birthday is on August 9. Saan ka nakatira? Where do you live? Saan ka nakatira? Or where do you live? So, for example, you live in uh, Makati City, which is the uh, business district. So, you will say, nakatira ako sa Makati or I live in Makati. Saan ka nagtatrabaho? Where do you work? The next question that you should know is, saan ka nagtatrabaho? Or, where do you work? So, for example, you want to say that you work uh, at Intel. Or sometimes there's call center in Intel, right? So, uh-huh. there are many call centers in the Philippines and many like uh, younger Filipinos work in call centers. And so, you can say, nagtatrabaho ako sa Intel or I work at Intel. And then, the, usually, the follow-up question would be, what do you do at Intel? So, then you would say, oh, uh, I'm a call center agent or I'm a, what's this, like a, in, what is this, like, IT person or I'm the CEO of Intel. Oh, wow. Ano ang phone number mo? What's your phone number? The next question that you should know is, ano ang phone number mo? Oh, we're getting really, like, in the closer territories. <laughs> so, for example, you really want to be friends with this person or more than friends. Then you ask, ano ang phone number mo? Or, what's your phone number? For instance, you want to give your phone number to this person, whoever this person is. Ang number ko ay, and then your number. For instance, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. In English, my number is this. So, usually people would still ask for your phone number. But usually they would say, uh, what's your cell phone number? Saan ka nag-aral ng Filipino? Where did you learn Filipino? Saan ka nag-aral ng Filipino? In English, 
where did you learn Filipino? So this is very interesting and very important to be able to respond to this. When the person that you're talking to is really like amazed with your Filipino, so you better reply with, Nag-aral ako gamit ang filipinopod101.com or I studied with filipinopod101.com. So where did you learn Filipino? Mahilig ka ba sa pagkaing Pilipino? Do you like Filipino food? Mahilig ka ba sa pagkaing Pilipino? Or, do you like Filipino food? For instance, you really do. <laughs> so, how do you respond to this question? You say, Oo, lalong-lalo na ang adobo. If adobo is your favorite. Or it can be kare-kare. Then you would say, Oo, lalong-lalo na ang kare-kare. In English, yes, especially kare-kare or adobo. This is very uh, important question to know because you usually get asked this question when you say go to uh, gatherings or parties or just like um, when you're staying in a friend's Filipino friend's house right their moms would usually ask you oh do you like Filipino food what do you want to eat and then they will most probably give you that food serve you that food they're very hospitable saan ang magandang pasyalan sa Pilipinas where is it nice to go to in the Philippines the next question that you should know is, Saan ang magandang pasyalan sa Pilipinas? In English, where is it nice to go to in the Philippines? If I'm going to give an advice now, I would say Palawan, definitely. And you would see, just type Palawan in Google, you would see really beautiful pictures. But if you want to be really specific where exactly in Palawan, then either El Nido or Coron. So, for instance, I would say, sa Coron, Palawan. Or in English, in Coron, Palawan. It's very nice, actually. Very cheap and um, very beautiful place. So, I haven't been to Coron. I've been to El Nido. <laughs> I've been to El Nido, not Coron. Not yet. So, those are the top 10 questions that you should know. And um, are there any other questions that you think you should know? If there are, please don't forget to comment them down below. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and go to FilipinoPod101.com. Bye. <laughs> For and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> you want real mangoes? Go to the Philippines. We have the best mangoes. And if you really want the best, best mangoes, I think you should go to this island called Guimaras. Hi, I'm Erica, and welcome to Filipino Top Words. Today we are going to learn 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Salamat pero sa totoo lang, hindi ako isang native speaker. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. Salamat pero sa totoo lang, hindi ako isang native speaker. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. If you start learning now, you'll be one of those few foreigners who can amaze Filipinos. Isang taon lang ang kinailangan ko para maging mahusay sa pagsasalita. It took me only one year to become fluent. Isang taon lang ang kinailangan ko para maging mahusay sa pagsasalita. It took me only one year to become fluent. So, I, I don't know how easy actually Filipino is for foreign people. I don't know if in one year you'll be able to speak it. Probably like the basics of it, right? Because Filipino, you don't really need to learn new alphabet. And also, some of the words are in Spanish, so if you kind of know Spanish, then you would most probably understand some of the words, but for you to be able to speak one year, I think, is fine. But for you to be able to actually understand all the nuances in the language, then one year is probably a bit too short. Makakapagsalita ako ng Filipino gaya ng isang Pilipino sa loob ng tatlong taon. I'll speak Filipino like a native speaker in three years. Makakapagsalita ako ng Filipino gaya ng isang Pilipino sa loob ng tatlong taon. I'll speak Filipino like a native speaker in three years. That's actually a good target, right? But of course, there are still so many things that you won't be... Probably like inside jokes, right? Like Or especially since Filipino language is... Like any other language is continuously evolving right because we have lots of um slang now right like slang that you get from american slang and then also gay language gay lingo right 
So all of those words, and then usually when you learn Filipino, you won't get to hear those uh, slang or like street words. And most people actually use a bit of like casual, even in, they only use really formal Filipino in say formal situations, formal settings. So this is a good target, but good luck. Sampung taon na akong nag-aaral ng Filipino. I've been learning Filipino for 10 years. Sampung taon na akong nag-aaral ng Filipino. I've been learning Filipino for 10 years. That's actually very good. I mean, for me, for us, like, English, we take so many years. And still, there's some things that you cannot understand. So, for instance, we learn English, like, standard English, right? And then you talk to, say, an American or to a British person. And then there are so many words that you cannot understand. But you cannot understand them because these are, like, um, but it's like the usage of the words is different from how you learned it from the dictionary. Sometimes when you speak to them, you sound so formal. 10 years is very good. Kaya kong manood ng mga pelikulang Filipino nang walang subtitle. I can watch Filipino movies without subtitles. Kaya kong manood ng mga pelikulang Filipino nang walang subtitle. I can watch Filipino movies without subtitles. Uh, we are releasing so many indie movies recently. Those are really good movies, so please watch Filipino movies. And if you can see them without subtitles, very good. Kaya kong magkabisa ng higit kumulang mga limampung bagong salitang Filipino kada araw. I can memorize around 50 new Filipino words a day. Kaya kong magkabisa ng higit kumulang mga limampung bagong salitang Filipino kada araw. I can memorize around 50 new Filipino words a day. Oh, that's very impressive. I don't have memory. Masaya at madaling aralin ang Filipino. Filipino is fun and easy to learn. Masaya at madaling aralin ang Filipino. Filipino is fun and easy to learn. Yeah, which actually it is, right? It's very, I think it's easier compared to say Japanese or Chinese. Because as I've said, first, Filipino, you don't need to learn new alphabet, which immediately makes it easy, right? Because learning a new alphabet is is very hard, right? I mean, if you say, for example, walk in the streets and then you can read the signs, that's already something. Because say you go to Japan, then you see all the signs and you cannot read kanji or hiragana or katakana, right? Then you cannot, it's like as if you're, I don't know, you're lost. But at least with Filipino, then, you can immediately read the signs. And then the next thing is, you learn the words. Naintindihan ko ang lahat ng sinabi mo. I completely understood everything you said. Naintindihan ko ang lahat ng sinabi mo. I completely understood everything you said. Yeah, so when someone tells you this, then they're amazed. Yeah, so that's why they're just like, oh, great. So for example, someone tells you this very long uh, explanation about something, then as a Filipino, you can simply say, gets, gets ko. Because that's very Filipino actually, which means I got it. Marami akong alam na slang sa Filipino. I know a lot of slang words in Filipino. Marami akong alam na slang sa Filipino. I know a lot of slang words in Filipino. It depends also when you use the slang words because not in all circumstances, can you use slang words, right? Especially if you're just meeting someone for the first time, then you would want to be a bit more formal. Then becoming too formal is not natural. It can be seen as sarcastic even. Actually, I think the key to being thought of as fluent is like getting this balance of being like casual, natural, and also a bit like more formal, right? I think so. Nakakabasa na ako ng nobela sa Filipino. I can now read the novel in Filipino. Nakakabasa na ako ng nobela sa Filipino. I can now read the novel in Filipino, which is very good. If you read actual like old Filipino novels, it's very, what do you call this, like flowery. It's like it really evokes emotions when you read Filipino novels. It's actually hard to write in really, say, 
old poetic Filipino now. So that's it for today's Filipino top words. What sentence would you say to amaze us? <laughs> well, actually, we're easily amazed, so don't hesitate to write anything down below <laughs> or comment because you might comment negative things, right? Okay. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to see other videos like this, then head on to filipinopod101.com. See you in the next lesson. Naintindihan ko ang lahat ng sinabi mo. Marami akong alam. <laughs> Inay, ito na po ang inyong pansit. <laughs> Want to improve reading in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top 10 ways to practice reading with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, start a lesson and read along with the lesson notes. With every lesson, you get bonus lesson notes. These give you the lesson in writing, the dialogue, the vocabulary, and the grammar explanations. So as you listen to a lesson, read along with the lesson notes. By listening and reading along, you hear how each word is pronounced and can easily keep up. Number two, read with the dialogue study tool. With the dialogue study tool, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of a lesson's conversation. You get the text, the translation, the audio, and if applicable, the romanization, so you can read and listen to each line individually. To practice your reading, reread and review each line until you master it. Then, move on to the next line. You get this feature in every one of our lessons. Number three, read along with the lesson transcript. You also get transcripts with every lesson. These are word-for-word -word scripts of everything that was said in the lesson and are completely free to access. So use these to read along. Number four, download the PDF notes and transcripts. Want to practice reading on your own time? Save the lesson notes and transcripts as PDFs to your device and keep them forever. That way, you can open them up and practice reading at any time. You can also print the PDFs out to keep as physical reading material. Number five, practice with extensive reading books. Extensive reading is a learning tactic where you read as many books as possible at a level that's easy for you. And you follow these two rules. One, you skip over words you don't know, and two, you jump to a new book if the current one is boring. The goal is to help you master reading, vocab, and grammar simply by reading a lot without getting stuck on minor words. You can find extensive reading books from absolute beginner level to advanced. These are simple one line per page books and all of the translations are on the lesson page. Simply look for the extensive reading pathways in the lesson library. You can also download these books as PDFs and print them out. Number six, take your time and read slowly. Whether you're reading with the notes, books, or the dialogue tool, be sure to take your time. Read the lines slowly on the first try, just like a child would when they start learning to read. This is so you can get acquainted with every word. Number seven, then speed up your reading. Once you've read a line slowly and are familiar with the words, start speeding up. Reread that same line a little bit faster on the second try, and then a little faster on the third try. Doing this will help you read faster. Number eight, take the reading comprehension video lessons. These lessons are specifically designed to test your reading skills. You're presented with a real life scenario, such as reading a sign at the train station, and are tested on the words presented on the screen. Don't worry, you get the answer at the end. And translations are available in the dialogue section. Number nine, get reading assignments from your Premium Plus teacher. You can also get assignments that cover listening, writing, speaking, and even reading from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number 10, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more reading lessons, then visit our lesson library and under category, Choose Reading and Writing. You get instant access to all of the pathways and lessons that will help you master all areas of the language, including reading. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. 
we release new videos every week. See you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.